Um, hello, sir. Can I can I have just a minute of your time? I promise it'll it'll only take a moment. I'm busy. I need to go fight some crime. What? But this is this is a deal you don't want to miss. I, I'm broke. Never they in don't... your life will you be able to save seventy percent on something so expensive. You know what I need to save? I need to save those people's lives that are being attacked by venom right now. You're gonna regret this. I'm Spider Man. I regret everything. I mean, fair enough. All right, so can I go now? I guess. All right. Thank you for trusting your friendly neighborhood, Spider-Man. You're welcome, Spider-Man. I'm never going to meet my sales quota. I guess I'll head over here and try to sell my wares. Surely someone will want to save 70% on a barista and a Spider-Man enjoy teriyaki bowls. Hello, hello, welcome to A Novel Console, your weekly podcast where we talk about books, games, food, and stuff that caught our attention during the week. My name is Chris, and with me is my beautiful co-host and wife, Karen. Hello. Why are you making that face? You look like a blowfish. Because I feel blisters on the roof of my mouth, and I'm touching them with my tongue. Where'd you get blisters from? I have no idea. And that's what happens at a novel console. But you know who doesn't have blisters in their mouth? Spider-Man. And our Patreon supporters. <laughs> our Patreon supporters support us with $2 a month every month. And they get entered into our monthly drawing of a video game and a book that we give out at the end of the month. And I think we're going to announce the winner of Persona 5. Um, and? House in the Cerulean Sea. <laughs> Next. The house. Episode. Yeah, because it'll be basically end of month next... Oh, my God. Yeah, we... Wait, no. Ne- oh. the, wait, the one after that's going to be the end of the month. Yes. Yeah. Close yeah. enough. Yeah, next week we're having... <laughs> we're going to be on episode 25. It's a milestone. Can you believe that? We've had... We're a quarter old. Yeah, we don't technically have 25 episodes, but we've uploaded something for 25 weeks straight. That's crazy. Isn't that awesome? To think we started doing this in a hotel room at your friend's wedding. And then you made me re-record the whole fucking episode when we got home. Yeah, it was really bad. I forgot a lot of stuff. <laughs> that, that first episode was, uh, was atrocious. They've only gotten better. They have. I yeah. mean, those cold opens keep getting worse and worse. But <laughs> I mean, I feel like this one was better. Thanks. I let it, so I mean... No, I mean... It should be better. You, you, it's not your cold opens that are bad. Um, it's my ideas for the cold, cold aw, opens that are bad. Bless him. So, but yeah, that, I, I hope that one was kind of funny. Not, none of them are as funny as... Um, the pirate? The pirate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like over yonder. <laughs> I just love that so much. <laughs> After hanging out with Sarah, Sarah and Saimara, I, I want to do a, I want to do a um, Dracula cold open. A Dracula cold open. Blah blah blah. <laughs> well, you need to read a Dracula book then. No, God, no. I did just read a vampire book. Then you can do. But it's not a Dracula book. Well, I do need to review that. We can talk about some sex again. Yeah, because we always love bringing back Frankenstein's dick and... We got vampire dick and werewolf dick. Yeah. Is it furry? Or is it, or is it a th- rocket? Is it a red I, rocket? A I giant can, red rocket? All I can think about <laughs> is how a furry dick would feel. <laughs> I imagine werewolf hair being like kind of spiky, <laughs> like a porcupine. Like a giant caterpillar. <laughs> So, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this week we were supposed to have a very special episode. It was supposed to be a very important episode to me. But personally. next week is episode twenty-five, so we gotta have a special episode next week. Yes. So what we're gonna do, and what we decided to do late last night, because we realize, oh shit, we don't have enough time to finish this stuff, is we're gonna finish it over the weekend. We're going to make sure we write a really good script for next week, and we're going to record it next Wednesday. That way I have enough time to edit and like find all the music, because I actually want to add some extra stuff apart from just you know our usual... Um... It's like a special edition episode. Yes, because what we're covering is really important to me. Very important to him. And him. I think you've been enjoying it so far. I have, but... 
we're going to have like a, I've already got episode 50 planned. I'm not going to say it right now, but. So this is our podcast. You can do whatever the fuck you want. And I don't care. Wait, you can no. tell me I want to do this. Then let's do this. Cause the arcade was my idea. The hunt for the Cuban was my idea. The fucking, uh, episode for next week is my idea so when are you going to bring your ideas we might have to do it on episode 26 that's fine with me just tell me well no i i have i have an idea i'm gonna uh, yeah okay i think we should also do a reverse episode but i don't know if we should do that for a patreon or or for regular which definitely for next week's episode we are definitely going to have a patreon episode because there is a tie-in to what we're doing for next week and i want to do a deep dive of the movie because it's great so uh tell me what have you been reading what have you been doing i feel like we haven't talked about any of that stuff during the podcast lately so i've been reading um a lot of books let's be real i read way too many books at once i think I think I'm reading something like five or six right now, but last week I finished the Vampire and Werewolf book, and I, I'm not going to say a lot because now I want to review it, but this is the first book that I have stayed up like late into the night, like reading like I couldn't stop. When? Friday night. I stayed up really late. We were in bed, but I read it on my Kindle. You were passed out. Right. Yeah. Right. And then at four in the morning, I woke up because I forgot to turn off my alarm and you were just snoring in my face and wouldn't let me go back to sleep. So I had to leave and go to Uber. That sounds like a you problem. That sounds like one of the things that I say that you stole from me. We are one person at this point. Like, there is no stealing from each other anymore. I mean, it's been three years and a seven months. Three years and seven months to the day. Jesus Christ, it's been a, that's been a very short time. July. And a long time and a short time. 11th, 2017. Wow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. The year the, the Switch came out. Yeah. That was actually a really good year for gaming. Cool. I don't remember that. I remember you buying one. Anyway. Um, at a pawn shop for two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I jipped them, and it was perfectly fine. All I had to do was just buy a couple of things because it was missing a couple of things. But I still have it. It works perfect. I'm finally reading a Meg Cabot book that you bought for me like more than a year ago. She's one of my favorite authors, and I haven't read any of her stuff in years. If you guys hear some like nasal noises, it's Luna sneezing because she's biting her paws. She's dramatic. Mm-hmm. Is that all you've been reading? I finally, I finally started using the library again, and I've read the next um, installment of Saga, which you turned me on to. Yeah, Saga, Saga was a very hard grasp for me saga to, is so fun just to stick to it it took me a few tries i it was so boring to me if you're not familiar it's like the series of intergalactic comics graphic novels um and like there's this couple from two different planets two different species and they've mated and had a baby and it's like the travesty of the whole galaxy. Yeah, and they want to find but the these baby. These two races came together, and they want to destroy the baby. Um, yeah, it's very, very. Um, it's a very cool parallel to racial inequalities and prejudice and everything. Yes. Yeah, so th- that story, uh, their their two species have been warring for thousands of years. Is it? I don't hundreds of years exactly. Um, and. Basically, the reason why they want to kill them and the baby is because that would give the races the hope and the idea that they can live in peace if these two decided to have a baby together. Which, that reminds me of Final Fantasy VI, because the evil empire is basically the Nazi German army, and the character that you start off with is a half-esper, half-human hybrid child which means that espers and humans can live together and the empire wants to kill them so it's basically like if a black person and a white person got together and i came out and they wanted to kill me and my parents because of it it's like you and me getting together except i'm brown 
Yeah, it's a little... Different. More accepted, I guess you could say. Isn't that sad? Yeah. That's that's pretty shitty. That's pretty shitty. All right, let's get out of that. Let's let's not dwell there. That's too depressing for this podcast. But it's very colorful and entertaining, the comic, the graphic novel, whatever. Yes, I got it. it and it does... It's very graphic. graphic. Very, very graphic. Page two, robot dick. <laughs> I mean, like, vivid detail robot dick. And there's that one ghost girl that's, like, chopped in half. and Her all... guts are hanging out. The entire Isabel. time. Poor the entire Isabel. time her guts are hung, hanging out. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you've been reading good stuff. I've been reading lots of good stuff and I... lots of not good stuff. I... I've been... <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what the not good stuff is. Um, I'm guessing it's for this week's episode. Yeah. So I've been playing this week's episode, which I, we made a post on Instagram, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I I have a couple of issues with the main character, but that's completely neither here nor there. Uh, but I did start playing Star Wars Squadrons, which is the air combat uh, Star Wars game. It's first person only. That's really fucking good. That would make me so sick. I fly an X-Wing and an A-Wing and a TIE Fighter. And oh my god, I want one in real life. You know who isn't going to be flying an X-Wing anymore? Han Solo? No. Me? No. Who? A woman. Took you long enough. <laughs> Cara Dune. Yeah, I'm so, I'm, well, like, I'm number one bummed because I realized her name was so similar to mine. I'm like, oh, I'm in Star Wars. Cara Dune, Cara Dune. It's not a stretch. I can see it. <laughs> I can easily see it. But yeah, she went and fucked up everything. She was my lady crush and no more. So apparently, uh, I read something somewhere, I, don't, I can't remember where, that said that Disney had been looking for an excuse to fire her. Oh, really? Because she had been very transphobic before. And... Which is weird to me, because she's like the most manly woman you've ever seen. Mm. <laughs> okay, maybe not, but... Mm. <laughs> um, but then she made some comments, uh, I think it was during this week, where she was saying that the Republican Party is being as oppressed as the Jews were in the Holocaust. <laughs> She's a fucking idiot. Yeah. She is an idiot. Yeah. It, 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 mm, it. Don't compare anything to what the Jews went through because no, especially not the Republican. Par- we're not. We're not political here. Never mind. I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. But. So yeah, so Star Wars <laughs> Squadrons, it's amazing. It's fast, it's fun, it, it's something I didn't even know I needed. And the best part is that right now you can get that game for 20 bucks anywhere. That's pretty damn cheap. You know That's what's as e- much as a, as a book would cost. You know what's even better? What? When this game came out, it was 40 bucks. Oh, really? So it was... Not 60? No, it was super cheap. In fact, I bought that game... And the same day it came out, uh, Crash 4 came out. I bought both of them. Crash was 60. This game was 40. Guess which one I've played more? This one. Yeah. Star Wars. Star Wars. I love Crash Bandicoot, but... Do the noise. Do the noise. No, I can't. Wow. Wow. I can't do it right. I can't. (laughs) Luna perked up so quick. Look at that smoosh. Look at her smoosh. And uh, apart from that, I've been playing uh, still Metal Slug. I just cannot put Metal Slug down. What is it with you and Metal Slug? It's just so much fun. I, I love Metal Slug. And I, I thought you had seen the love for Metal Slug too when you played it for the podcast. I mean, I did, but not to the point where I think I would sit there and play it all the time. I mean, it's so good. And uh, let's see what else. I played a little bit of Hades. Uh, I need to really get back into 80s. I want to finish it because I want to do it for the podcast. It's such a good fucking game. And uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. I've been playing a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles, getting back into it. I'm about 30 hours in, which apparently it's halfway through the game. 
And I don't think I can put in another 30 hours because, Jesus Christ, that game is massive. And I'm looking at my games right now. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I did play a little bit of Mario World today while I was waiting for it to be time for me to leave again to do Uber. But that's it. I, I do want to get into Zelda again. I want to go again through um, Link's Awakening because that's a really good game. And lately I've been feeling that itch to, to play a retro Zelda game and... I don't want to do Ocarina of Time because I beat that game at least once a year. But I do feel like I'm due for A Link to the Past. So, are you ready for your book talk? I believe I am. All right, ma'am. Let's get started in DC's book talk. My Jarja voice. Oh dear. Are you doing that because of what the book is and what the book is similar to? No, I, I didn't put that and that together. Are you kidding me? No, I, I completely <laughs> forgot where it was even said and everything. But, oh god. But yeah, tell me, what are we what are we doing this week? Okay, so this week's book is Black Buck by Matteo Ascaripur. What? Ascaripur? I'm pronouncing it phonetically. That could be terribly wrong. Let me see the name. Ascaripur. That sounds that that sounds <laughs> like how it looks. Yeah. So it was published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt on January fifth, twenty twenty one. Dare I say it? At times, this book felt like straight up plagiarism of the movie. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. I'm laughing because his eyes are already so big and they just went full on bug. <laughs> Plagiarism? I mean... That's pretty big and bold of you to say. There were very, um, very subtle differences. <laughs> Did they come to stop a mud hole in your ass? Oh, God. Basically, but not with the same words. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? No, it's, it, it doesn't get that similar. Nobody turns oh. into horses or anything. <laughs> Sorry, we're probably going to give you lots of spoilers for the movie, but I'll try okay, not to so give you spoilers it, for the book. <laughs> if you haven't seen... Um, sorry to bother sorry you. Sorry to bother you. Just skip about half an hour and you'll be good. You'll probably <laughs> land somewhere on Gorbage, but who cares? <laughs> That's oh, probably what God. you're here for, just the Gorbage. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, it, it's like somewhat fitting because literally the first few words of the description, like on the book jacket and everything, are for fans of Sorry to Bother You. Because it is Sorry to Bother You. Did sorry, in a slightly different setting. Did Sorry to Bother You ever get like a book adaptation or... I, I mean, I, it, 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 here it is. No, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know if it was like based... I don't think it was based on a book. Um, so I'll, I'll start by explaining to you why the hell I even bothered reading this book since it is certainly not in any of my go-to genres or really even remotely close to being something I would typically read. Several months ago, I was invited to take part in Libro FM's ALC program. I can't remember if I've mentioned this before, um, but Libro FM is an audiobook platform that supports indie bookstores, which is awesome because indies tend to get forgotten when it comes to audiobooks. Their ALC program is a monthly um, set of advanced listening copies provided to reviewers for free. And this book just happened to be one of the January ALCs. Everyone had been talking about this book, Black Book. So I figured, why not give it a shot? So uh, there, there is no Sorry to Bother You book. There is a screenplay. Well, obviously. Like they sold the screenplay as the book. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Mm. I have no interest. <laughs> I love the movie. I thought it was a great movie. I hated it. Well, you haven't worked in call centers you hate. I mean... You haven't worked in sales-based call centers. I did for like a week in college, and then I quit. <laughs> you didn't I, don't, get... I don't have a sales, no. You, no. Got, you didn't get to the, to the soul-crushing part of no, it. No, no, no. Okay, so enter me. Wait. Enter where me going into books blind becomes a really 
really big fucking problem. I hate satire. I hated, sorry to bother you. Chris can tell you that I almost got up and walked out of that theater because I was bored and weirded out out of my damn mind. I was so weirded out. It did get really weird, especially the part where he's like selling nuclear weapons to Iran or something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. And the whole horse thing. The whole like you, you horse thing. You do cocaine and you turn into a, a, a horse. Yeah. And you gotta go stomp a mud hole in some asses. <laughs> that was pretty funny, but like, like I don't know. And seeing the horse dick. Oh, it was too much. <laughs> I forgot about the horse mu- dick. Yeah. <laughs> and like Army Hammer just like snorting coke the whole time. Yeah. It was weird. Oh, he got into some trouble recently, didn't he? For snorting coke? No. Turning people into horses? No. I think it was something... Racist? No. Maybe? <laughs> it was a sexual assault. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me either. He got into some deep trouble recently. You'll have to look that up, too. Yeah. Anywho, yeah, satire. It's not for me. I could have told you this if I had not gone into this book blind, but I go into all of them blind. I had to read Animal Farm in high school. Fucking hated it. I, 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 okay. So in her black book, following this kid, Darren, who is working as a Starbucks barista. And then I'm, I'm just going to read you the Goodreads description because it does a much better job than I ever could. Darren is content working at Starbucks in the lobby of a midtown office building, hanging out with his girlfriend, Soraya, and eating his mother's home-cooked meals. All of that changes when a chance encounter with Rhett Daniels, the silver-tongued CEO of Someone, S-U-M-W-N, New York City's hottest tech startup, results in an exclusive invitation for Darren to join an elite sales team on the 36th floor. After enduring a hell week of training, Darren, the only black person in the company, reimagines himself as Buck, a ruthless salesman unrecognizable to his friends and family. But when things turn tragic at home and Buck feels like he's hit rock bottom, he begins to hatch a plan to help young people of color infiltrate America's sales force, setting off a chain of events that forever changes the game. Black Buck is a hilarious, razor-sharp skewering of America's workforce. It is a propulsive, crackling debut that explores ambition and race, It makes way for a necessary new vision of the American dream. I would like to counteract that. I did not laugh one single fucking giggle this entire book. Everything else that it says in those last two sentences is entirely true. I completely get the point of the book. I understand where he was going. I get the point. But I want raw and real. I don't want satire. It's so fucking stupid. And just because of it being a satirical take, I really didn't appreciate some of the language that he was using. I'm not even going to repeat it here because it was so offensive, but not, oh. not in a racial way, oh. like in a, in a, in an abled way. I don't know how to word this without saying the words that are so offensive. In an enabled way? Like, did he enable... It's a slur that would be used towards a differently abled person. Uh, okay. It's frequently used. I'm like, was this necessary? I don't know. I, that just really, really rubbed me the wrong way. Does it start with the letter R? Yep. Oh, uh, that's not good. No. Nope. Even if it's satire. It's used that's... so frequently and just listening to it on audio, I was just cringing every single time and i i get that it's cringeworthy i get it but i don't know i think there's just a point where you take it too far <laughs> maybe i sound like, like a really horrible white woman like, but what, what, what's what was the guy's name and sorry to bother you cassius where he said the party and he's singing his song oh god that song that song makes you cringe too yeah i was we're not was gonna like, say those words i was sitting there i was like He's really saying that in front of all those white people. Uh-huh. And all the white people we're in the movie were singing it. We're singing it. That's not good. <laughs> I felt no, so uncomfortable. It's not good. And I, I, like I said, I get that it's supposed to make you uncomfortable, but. And it, it also. Make me uncomfortable with the realness, not with this. It also gives you this commentary on 
white people love black people's music, but they don't want to understand the struggle or deal with yeah what and how they get the experiences to you yeah. know, make this type of music. Yeah. It's a it, you might hate the movie and it might be satire and but you don't I hate get satire. It. I but get the it's, point. It's, it's very poignant. Yes. But back to Army Hammer before we continue. <laughs> so I, I I started reading headlines trying to find out which is the one that got him in trouble. Uh huh. Because he's apparently he's been a downward spiral for a few years. Let me guess. It started with the social network. Maybe. I, 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 <laughs> Hmm. That's the only other movie I've ever seen him in, I think. <laughs> so, apparently, he he has been accused of abuse, grooming, and cannibalism. What? What? Yeah. Uh, are you sure this isn't a Marilyn Manson headline? <laughs> <laughs> what? He's another fucking freak. He claimed to be the Antichrist. Come on. So, before we get into Manson, let me just read you some of the messages, the DM messages that uh, he sent, I think, a girl he was grooming or something. What? What does it even mean to groom someone? It's, it's Is when... it like Fifty Shades of Grey shit? Yeah, so basically you're like, um, oh, that's the fucking word. It starts with a C. Um, it's not coercing. Um, you're basically... Turning a person into... A... Me trying to turn you into Aragorn. Mm, yes, but it's in a toxic way and in a yeah. way that you break this person's personality to make them a submissive husk of what they were. Sounds like my previous relationship. <laughs> that motherfucker was grooming you. He really was. That fucking piece of shit. Anyway. So uh, here's some of the messages. There's, there's way more and I can't find them. Um, Army sent this to one of his uh, girlfriends. He said, you just live to obey and be my slave. I will oh, own you. Oh. That's my soul. My brain, my spirit, my body. Would you come and be my property till you die? If I wanted to cut off one of your toes and keep it with me in my pocket so I always had a piece of you in my possession, question mark. You can pluck out a strand of hair for that shit. Put it in a locket. Oh, oh, wait. Here's another one. So hard. Thinking of holding your heart in my hand and controlling when it beats. I'm 100% a cannibal. I want to eat you. Fuck. That's scary to admit, B. I've never admitted that before. I've cut the heart out of a living. And that's the last of the message. What? This is real? I, I, I don't know. The thing is that... You find lots of fake news. No, the thing is that it it blew up when it happened. And then slowly over time, like it always happens, women keep coming forth saying, yeah, this is true. This uh, is true. This is true. So why isn't he? And after that, after that, it was just gone like downhill. So it, it might be real. He wants to eat you. Mm -hmm. So he is his character in Sorry to Bother You. Yeah. That dude is fucking bad yeah. shit crazy. A famous cokehead. Who turns people into to, horses. And change them to uh, bathtubs. Yeah. That was... Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, you, really you, have was go, you have to go watch this movie now just to, like, understand that we're not even exaggerating. There, there were really funny parts in the movie, like, at the beginning where uh, Terry Crews is telling him that he owes him rent money. And he's like, you only care about your people and your family. And Terry Crews is like... You're my nephew. <laughs> and <laughs> and the part where he's like, oh, oh, you have a good day. You have a good day too, man. <laughs> I remember, like, I suggested that we go see it when we saw the trailer for it because we both thought it was so funny, like, him adapting his white voice. Yes. Because it's, it's, it's the actor, I don't remember his name, um, but he is like the little sidekick in Megamind, and he's the principal, and she's the man. He's a weird, weird man, <laughs> but that's his white voice. <laughs> what is that actor's name? He's brilliant. He's so weird. Um, his big glasses, and I see him in a fedora. Isn't he? He's he's the he's the man that Claire goes up against for the town. Yes, for he, the stop he's sign the, in he's Modern the, Family. <laughs> he's the the school director in uh, Community. Yeah. Yeah, I know him. He was in Feel of the Future too. He's he is um, 
I forget his name, but well, yeah, Cassius the skinny Sir. white nerd with the huge neck, yeah, with the huge head. He's the white Cassius voice. Cassius is the the main. Character. He's Cassius's white voice. Yes. Yes. Anyway, we <laughs> when they were walking so far. when they were walking in like the top floor of like the top sellers, <laughs> everybody was speaking in their white voice. That shit was so funny. Am I? What, what, was Key or Peel the the super high salesman that was like the top of all time or whatever? Or he just looked like I think, like it, I think it might have been Keegan. Yeah, uh, Key. Was it him? I think it might have been. Because I, so feel I like think we had I think this during... discussion while watching it, but it turned out it wasn't him, even though it looked uh... like him. No, it was it. Lo- he looked like Peel, but he wasn't Peel. Because he had like that eye, eye patch and, and like yeah. all the facial hair and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. No. I don't even know where I was. <laughs> oh, okay. So I, I'm going to be really honest. Fucking Army Hammer. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Right? I'm going to be honest and tell you that I like pretty much checked out every 15 minutes or so of <laughs> this audio book. And I can therefore not give you a completely coherent summary, which is why I just read that Goodreads summary to you. Um, going back to what I already said, the, the only reason I'm not giving this book a lower rating than what I did is that I do understand and appreciate the message. I promise I do. I promise. I get the message that it's conveying and the parallels to where we stand in terms of like racial inequality and injustices. I get it. I promise. I'm not just saying that. I know I probably sound like a broken record. <laughs> what I didn't care for was just the satirical presentation. I, I've never been able to take it seriously. I understand what it is and the purpose it serves, but I, I just can't stomach it. The, does it just come off as pretentious to you? So pretentious. That's why I hate Theory of a Dead Man. That's, oh my god. That's why I had, hate Hollywood Undead. Because, well, that's fair. Because they're rap rock and they try to make clever lyrics to their shitty music and it, it just, I feel like somebody grabs my balls and twists them every time I hear, I am so freaking bored. Nothing to do today. I think I'll just medicate. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Oh, Write something God. good. You stupid fucking piece of shit. Fuck you, Tyler. Fuck you. Asshole. So anyway, yeah. I want raw. I want real. I don't want not raw and real unless it's got fucking fairies in it. <laughs> It did have and they need to be fucking fairies. <laughs> <laughs> that comes out this coming Tuesday. Oh my god, I'm gonna finally get my fix. Speaking of, you're gonna get a fix, and I'm gonna get a fix tomorrow because uh, I'm so jelly that you get your fix first. Mario 3D Land plus uh, Bowser's Fury, 3D World Land is the the 3DS one, but Bowser's Fury. I'm excited for Bowser's Fury. That one looks pretty fucking cool. So yeah, the premise was great. The execution. I'm I'm not a fan. The end. <laughs> so, I'm done. <laughs> you give it a rating? Three. <laughs> three little stars. Hey, that, on that's three. That's way better. That's than better I than thought. Bridgerton. <laughs> yeah, you gave Brid, and you like Bridgerton the series. The show. The show. So you would rather watch? Sorry no, to bother we're not you. Talking no, the no, movie no, and the no, show right no. now. Uh, do you want to, do you, I would what? rather watch Bridgerton than watch Sorry to Bother You, no, but I would rather watch Sorry to Bother You than read Bridgerton that's again. That's what I was going to ask you. But, like, I'll watch it with as background noise while I'm reading another book. <laughs> <laughs> that movie had so many good things. It did have one one thing that was really bad, which was the, the whole Stephen Young thing and uh, what's her name? Um, huh? Valkyrie from Thor. What's her name? Tessa Thompson uh-huh. and Stephen Young, the Asian guy. When they kiss and they never tell Cassius, uh-huh. and that that was the really shitty part in that movie. The rest of it, I, I thought. But was I mean, phenomenal. he was kind of shitty to her too. He, he was good until he started making money. It's, then it's he just, turned into a, a piece of shit. The, exactly, exactly. What happens in this book? Exactly. I, I kind of want to watch Sorry to Bother You again. Oh, God. Watch it without me. Anyway, yeah, I will. Moving on. It's time for <laughs> games and stuff. <laughs> so, in case 
I was laughing too hard, Garrett, and said we're moving on to game set stuff. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, this week's game, I really, I really pulled this one out of my ass because I, I finished it last night and I was like, oh shit, I guess I'm gonna have to talk about this even after we made the Instagram co- post. But I wasn't originally planning on talking about this because I, I'm gonna mention it a little bit later on. But when Miles Morales was originally announced, I immediately hated him. One of the major reasons is because his tragic backstory is my dad loves me too much. Oh, woe is me. Then his dad dies. Peter Parker doesn't even have a fucking dad. Exactly. Then his dad dies and he's like, oh, I should have paid attention to him. Oh, shit. You fucking shithead. Kids suck. Yeah. Anyways, um, like I said in the the Instagram post, um, I hated him coming into 2018's uh, Marvel Spider-Man. Miles Morales is a really big part of that game. I started liking him to the point where at the end of the game, I was like, I I really care for Miles Morales. He's not just some little shithead, even though he he really is just some little shithead. Um, But anyways, let's get into it. It's Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, It's a sequel to the 2018 Marvel Spider-Man. This game was developed by Insomniac Games and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment on November 12th, 2020. (gasps) My birthday. Oh, it is. What else? Oh, the <laughs> PS5 came out that day. Yes, it did. No wonder that date seemed so important. Asshole. <laughs> it is an open world adventure game in which you control the titular Miles Morales as he fight, as he figures out, not fight, well, he does fight, he figures out how to be his own Spider-Man. So is, is Peter Parker in the game? I know I saw him in the movie yeah, yeah, preview. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a couple of times in the game. Um, he's there during the first mission, then he goes off to Europe, and he doesn't come back until after every shit, all the pieces of shit has, have hit the fan. So. That's when he's fighting um, Jake Gyllenhaal. No, wasn't it's not. No, it's it's not that. that uh, no, I'm, I'm being facetious, but wasn't that in Europe? That was in Europe. Uh, ha, ha, ha. I made a funny. You didn't pay oh, attention to my funnies oh, last time. I, I want to apologize to you for that. Mm-hmm. You actually made a really funny mm-hmm. joke about, do you think, what's her name? Michelle Ivy. Michelle Ivy changes stances every time she changes turtle heads. I caught that while I was editing the podcast and it was really funny. I actually laughed a lot. And I'm so sorry that I didn't catch it originally. Apology accepted. I love you. I love you too. Good. <laughs> Those Spider-Man movies, God, they suck. Tom, uh, Tom Holland is great Spider-Man, but and Spider-Man <laughs> at the very end after the credits. Those, <laughs> oh, those spoilers! Movies, those movies they've written for him have been complete garbage, but Tom Poor Holland, guy. Tom Holland is amazing. So yeah, so the graphics in the game are amazing. Ah, oh, Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man. The graphics are amazing. <laughs> That wasn't funny. <laughs> Everything is incredibly detailed from Miles' suit to the impressive recreation of New York City. All the character models have unique features, especially the ones that you interact with directly during missions and cutscenes. The particle effects from Snowfall and the speech which you can reach create a sense of speed that is rarely matched in other games. I did have a problem with the Snowfall later on in the game. The Snowfall? Yeah, it gets snowing. Mm-hmm. Why was it a problem? I'll, 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 I'll let you know. Okay. The animations in the game are great. Uh, Miles Swagger, as he swings from building to building, performing spins, pirouettes, and dives really gives Miles his own (laughs) sense of identity, which (laughs) really helps helps differentiate him from Peter in the previous game. I actually added that word in because I knew it would catch you off off guard. (laughs) I'm glad you didn't proofread this before. Even though he's bitching at me for not proofreading it before. <laughs> you were doing something more important. I was. I really like how every movement and interaction with the NPCs on and off of cutscenes feels like something you'd see real humans do. Nothing feels overly acted or flamboyant just for the sake of cinematography. Uh, the sound design in the game is mostly the exact same as in the previous game. Uh, That's not to say it's bad or it feels old. On the contrary, it has this unique Spider-Man charm and identity that cannot be copied by any other game or games set in the Marvel Universe. Like that horrendous Marvel Avengers game. Jesus Christ, I played like the first two missions and I 
stop. But I, I remember you being so excited about that game. And the thing is, those first two missions were awesome. Like the first one, you're Kamala Harris escaping the city. Then the second one. What? Kamala Harris. Kamala Khan. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't need to do that on purpose. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, you're Kamala Harris escaping from Joe Biden's evil rule. <laughs> oh, don't, don't hate on Joe like that. <laughs> Gotta find that Trump. <laughs> there, Kamala Khan escaping the city, and then you meet Bruce Banner, and you know you go on this amazing adventure. Then you meet. Start meeting the rest of the Avengers, and it just goes to shit. <laughs> so disappointed with that fucking game. <laughs> oh, but hey, <laughs> speaking of Marvel, mm. uh, Marla was telling me that she's binging all of the Marvel movies right now because Disney Plus has it set up that they're in chronological order. So we should do it. We should go watch all of them. I've never watched the original Iron Man. I have never watched it all the way through. I am not a fan of Iron Man. I saw Iron Man 2 in theaters, and that is actually what got me into the Marvel Universe. I went on a date with this really um, short guy from high school on to see that movie. And I was like, oh, this is cool, but th this isn't. <laughs> uh, the first Marvel movie that I actually watched was Avengers. Really? What? I did not care for any of it. Man, I saw both of the Thor films I, in theaters after seeing that. I Iron did Man see. And... I did see both th Thors. I hated the first Thor. I still hate the first Thor. I that mean, movie is it's, a it's fucking got piece Chris of shit. Hemsworth in it. it has Jamie Alexander and, and it has Kat Dennings. And Kat Dennings. So and you still didn't like it. And it's still a piece of shit movie. And Tom Hiddleston. <gasps> and I watched Iron Man two and three, and I've never watched the first one because I really don't care about Iron Man. You were crying when he died and. I was devastated. I, I Spoilers. <laughs> I couldn't give a, I couldn't give a lesser fuck about it. You didn't feel one iota of emotion when poor Peter was just. Mm -mm. No. I almost cried in the ending of 2018 Spider-Man when the bad stuff happens to Peter because that the oh that Andrew? last no uh, the the game oh the last 30 minutes of that oh, game. Oh yeah, I remember. I think Logan told me he cried too, if I remember correctly. It was it was just a little bit underneath Yakuza. I love it when men get emotional. Uh, Yakuza had me heavy breathing. So. <laughs> <laughs> but our, our wedding didn't make him that level emotional. No. Anyways, let's get back to the sound design. Mm -hmm. Spider Man, Spider Man, does whatever Spider Man. Okay. The voice acting is by far. <laughs> The standout of the game design. Of the sound design, not the game design. All the characters are well acted out, and they all feel like real people. Um, even if Yuri Lowenthal's Peter Parker does drag me out of the experience because he is just that amazing, it still is great that Peter Parker's voice actor is phenomenal. Hmm. It's a good thing he's not there throughout the entire game because I was like, holy shit, Yuri's so good. Uh, Miles, like Peter, does this thing where if he gets a call while he's swinging or moving at high speeds, he sounds a bit winded from all the effort that he has to put into the moving. Now, if he's standing still, he sounds as if he, as if he was standing still. So they recorded all the lines twice so they could have that. And the thing is, I hit your computer. The thing <laughs> is that if you're swinging and you stop in the middle of a sentence, his voice will calm down in the middle of the sentence. He won't stop or start over or keep sounding like he's, you know. So that that's really fucking cool. I think that is, it, it, it it's a small touch uh, that shows how committed Insomniac was to developing and creating this game. Uh, Miles does have a few lines in Spanish that, while they were said correctly, you can hear Miles' thick American accent. It isn't very off-putting, but him being half Puerto Rican and having a straight-up perfect Spanish-speaking mother, mother took me out of the narrative a bit. So it was like me speaking Spanish. So there's there's a take. when it, Sometimes when you take down enemies, he says, Eso me gusta. <laughs> oh, no. He's like, I like that. I was like, why, why are you saying it that weird? Or like when he's talking to his mom and he's saying, I love you, bye. He mm -hmm. says, te quiero, adios. 
It's like, dude, you're half Puerto Rican. Why do you sound so American? I get your dad's last name is Davis, and he was black, but Cause like still, I, dude. I think about like Jen when they were here that night and how she was not raised to learn Spanish at all, but she can at least, when she does say the Spanish words that she knows, she says them properly. <laughs> Does she say them? She rolls her R's and everything. So and... she doesn't say like an American saying pollo? Fuck you. <laughs> I'm from South fucking Georgia, okay? And I try. I try. Every time Sodi taught me a new word, I tried to say it the right way. And you did it right. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I tried. So the gameplay in the game is pretty much the exact same good thing you will find in the original. Uh, if you played the original Spider-Man, you know what to expect with the game. Tons of web swinging through New York City, sipping through buildings, bounding off ledges, and tons of long dives and dizzying heights. Climbing up to the top of the Empire State Building and looking down? That's some shit. Climbing to the top of the Avengers Tower and looking down? That's some shit. It is awesome. Apart from... From the expertly crafted traversal, there's a ton of combat that adds only a few original things to the formula. Namely, those are Miles' Venom powers, which are his bioelectric powers and Wait, his what? cloaking abilities. Venom powers? They call him Venom. But, but it's, not Venom. It's not Venom. It's we just his bioelectric Venom. powers because every time he touches something, it gets hit with electricity and it just like jams up like if you had hit with Venom. Well, shit, that makes me think of, um, what's his face? What's his name? Oh, Jamie Foxx. Not, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, these abilities make some challenging encounters from the first game way easier. Like whenever you have a big heavy brute, you just venom him, web him to the floor, and that's it. In the original, you actually had to beat the shit out of him. Uh, so this makes it way easier than it was in the first game. Uh, especially since the cloaking ability makes enemies forget where you are which actually helps you do stealth takedowns. Which reminds me, the stealth sections in the game are the worst part about the game. Why? So, it halts to a grind. The action halts to a grind immediately as soon as a stealth section comes in. So, not only that, but when enemies spot you, you can actually cloak and hide, but they take up to a minute for them to like relax so that you can actually take them down which is annoying because your cloaking gauge in a minute is almost empty so by the time you take them out you're already back to being visible and the enemies start attacking you and the fact that you have to wait to take somebody down after you've gone invisible and they have no idea where you are just seems like a waste other than that there are a ton of collectibles which i love and a ton of challenges that i can personally do without I feel like I'm saying a lot of bad stuff about this game, but I promise I actually did like it. You're just honest. Uh, the problems with the game. Here, here we're gonna. We're, <laughs> I have a few complaints. A few. A, a few. Actually, this I think this is the game that I complained the most out of all the ones that I've played. Uh, this game is impressive to the point where it pushed my PS4 Pro so hard that I could hear the fan over the sound coming from the TV. There were many times where the frame rate dropped so hard that the game actually took a visible one to two seconds to catch up with the action so it was like a slideshow at sometimes that sounds kind of boring and uh, no it, it's just like you're punching enemies mm -hmm. and you're fighting and everything but the camera just slows down and it's oh like, that's weird i've shown you bad frame rates before yeah you have yeah. it's weird yeah so uh this mostly happened where the part of where the particle effects of the snow came in <laughs> Especially towards the end of the game where you have to fight a bunch of enemies while in the middle of a snowstorm. So, that last part of the game chugged like a motherfucker. The other thing that I want to complain about is the audio. I did have an audio issue where in a particular mission an NPC was standing in front of Miles telling him what happened. Moving her mouth and her arms and everything. No sign was coming out. What? And Miles was just like... Okay, yeah. They went that way? Okay, I'll go. And the person said... <laughs> and nothing sounding out of her. Uh, there was also a huge glitch in the final boss in which we got stu stuck in an, atta an attack loop and attack loop. loop. And they kept attacking me. 
and I attacked back, and then when I was going to deliver the finishing blow, Miles got stuck to the floor. What? And was I it just, his spidey webs? I don't know, because he got <laughs> stuck to the floor. His Venom highlight would come up, and when you were supposed to hit the button for it to happen, nothing happened. So I had to let them kill me so I could start the fight all over again. That was kind of annoying. And honestly, that's never really happened to me in a video game before. So I guess there's a first time for everything. The thing that I hated the most about the game were the challenges. Mostly because I'm still burnt out on the first Spider-Man game from the Spider-Man challenges. Uh, they are not fun. And they are honestly the most tedious pain in the ass of the game. And I never want to experience them again. Uh, even with the added element of these are P Peter's training exercises for Miles so that he can learn how to be a better Spider-Man, I still hate them. Please, Insomniac, don't make me do them ever again. I don't like that you hide the abilities behind them either. If I want the super bound power, I want to be able to buy them. I don't want to earn it by flying through tiny rings in a 45 second time limit so that I can achieve the ultimate rank. I don't care about being ultimate and I'm I, I'm not happy that I have to do that shit. It, it's. I honestly would sit down and I would say, what do I want to play? I don't want to play Spider-Man because I don't want to do the fucking challenges. And That's sad. Yeah. I also didn't like that the game was 50 bucks. Um, it's a very short game. It's still great, but it's still very short. And for 50 bucks... That's a lot. Not worth the price. It was only 10 hours. With everything. Done. Everything. The only thing I haven't done is unlock all the trophies because it requires a new play, a new game plus playthrough. And I really don't want to do a new game plus in this game yet. So for the praises, I, I did like stuff about the game. Uh, the game is a Spider-Man fan fantasy. I have so many praises for this game. I love that they added a separate narrative quest to the game, uh, which was explored as you took down enemy bases. This made me want to clear them out as fast as possible so that I could find out what was going on. I love the collectibles sitting throughout the world, which led me to learn more about Miles and his life before he met Peter. I especially love the endgame collectible quest, which really made me emotional. Just like the ending of the first game, but instead of in a bad way, in a good way. Uh, the thing I love the most about the game, apart from the excellent Spider-Man story and the relatable characters, was the representation. Harlem has a huge part to play in the story since that's where Miles lives. And Harlem has a huge Afro-Latino community. Miles is also half Puerto Rican. Which, if I'm honest, it pushed me away from the character or originally because it felt like pandering. I mean... Why? Out of nowhere, Marvel says, we're introducing this thing called Marvel now. We're going to have a bunch of characters taking over roles of other characters that you love. So we're not going to make Peter Parker black. We're going to introduce a new character called Miles Morales. He's going to be half white, uh, half black, and half Puerto Rican. So for a company like Marvel to come out and say, hey, we have a half black, half Puerto Rican guy. Maybe you should read a story. Mm. Yeah, I get that. Out of nowhere, especially. So uh, that that's pretty much the, one of the main reasons why I didn't like him. Uh, apart from the my dad loves me too much. Uh, in this game, they had a lot of Puerto Rican representation from music, food, art, and the ways the characters spoke. And if you know me, then you know that I'm not a loud Puerto Rico, it's all that matters type of Puerto Rican. I like being felt like I'm seen and acknowledged, but there's no need to go out of your way to make me feel special just because of where I'm from. Seeing all the Puerto Rican representation just felt right. Nothing too exaggerated, and it was all confined to the Harlem area. So it's not like you were going to go to... Uh, Times Square, and you were going to see a giant Puerto Rican flag, because it's not Puerto Rican Day Parade. Why is there a giant Puerto Rican flag in Times Square? It's Christmas. Come on. Get your shit together. Uh, the food in the game especially looked amazing. They had pernil, pastele, arroz con gandule, and empanadillas all over the place during Christmas dinner at the Morales house, and that was awesome. Seeing, like, the whole spread on the table, just, like, giant caldero de arroz con gandule, that was pretty fucking cool. Uh, the other things that I liked about the game is that the Spanish in the game was spoken perfectly with very little errors. Uh, mostly the major thing that threw me off about it was Miles speaking in Spanish. Um, and the final piece of representation that I loved the most 
is that they included a deaf character who did ASL. Oh, that's awesome. And Miles actually did ASL to communicate with her. And she it has was a... not the character that was supposed to be talking. No. <laughs> no. That was an Maybe old... they got confused. <laughs> no, no. That was an old lady oh, that God. was supposed to be talking and then this young girl with the uh, ASL. Uh, she does play a, a major part in one of the uh, stories for closing it out. And she is just brave. She says that she went into the place. She found out where they were. This is the place. This is where you got to go. This is where you're going to beat all of them. She got out. She told Miles. And then, you know, that that was pretty cool. And there's also, which I'm, I'm surprised that I saw this. And awesome. I loved it. Uh, there's a lesbian couple in charge of the Feast Homeless Shelter. Which, it was pretty indignant to watch. I was like, oh no, my girlfriend is taking care of this while I'm doing this. Can you please go give her a hand? And, you know. That was... It's how it should be. It's like, we're not going to blow up the fact that they're gay or they're deaf or they're black or Puerto Rican just for the fact of that, just so that they can show everybody like it seemed. Because it then just seems like a fucking clown show. I mean, so the game... You make more of a point by not... Mentioning it. Exactly. Drawing attention to it. Yeah, so I love that this game goes above and beyond making everyone seem as human as they are without making them feel like they should be treated differently because of one aspect of who they are as a Mm -hmm. person. So Insomniac, in my opinion, you guys did a huge, great fucking job with this. Overall, this is a must-play for any Spider-Man fan, even if you hate Miles Morales. I promise you... (laughs) <laughs> Play these two PS4 Spider-Man games. You will like Miles Morales. I hated him. I think he's a pretty dope character now. Even though there are some flashback scenes where he's talking to his dad and I just want to beat the shit out of the kid. <laughs> While it's not worth the $50 because of its length and the few performance issues that it has, it does have that more of the same feeling as the previous game, which it's not bad. It still gets a 4.5 stars. It's close to being perfect, like the first game, but it just falls short because of those few issues. Sounded like a lot of issues to me. It does, but then (laughs) it's also kind of a huge fucking game, but it's also really short. But it does have a lot of little things. Oh, and also there's a Spider-Man cat, which is awesome. Oh, yeah, I remember you showing me. He's like, you have to come in here. There's a cat in Miles' backpack. It's so cool. I thought he was going to show me something Lord of the Rings related. I was kind of sad, but it was cute. Hmm. I don't know why I thought you were going to show me something Lord of the Rings. All right. So you know what time it is? I do. What time is it? It's time for Give Me the Gorbage. All right. That is Give Me the Gorbage. this place thanks to Chris's Uber adventures otherwise we may never have found it. Basically this place just serves a variety of teriyaki bowls. You choose your protein and your base and the base can be white rice, fried rice, or noodles and veggies or you can just go with all veggies. And of course it includes their teriyaki sauce. They also have the yakisoba option which is veggies and noodles. Um, I actually wanted to eat there today but I didn't want to get it to go. And I did. Because it's so hot and so fresh that if we keep it in that plastic bowl they serve it in, it's going to be mush. It's going to be um, Twisted Root Asian Edition. Except of hard. It'll be <laughs> it'll be mush. porridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I chose to go with the salmon bowl in the regular size, but when I saw how big Chris's large bowl was, I regretted my decision. Um, I chose fried rice as my base because who doesn't love fried rice? Okay, so I am going to hit you with my one complaint first. 
You need sauce options. Come on. Who wants a teriyaki bowl without some sort of like yum yum sauce or something? Tell me I'm not crazy because my husband thinks I'm crazy. I'm you not, know it needed something else. I'm not going to disagree with you. Um, it needed. It needed something else. To break it up. Yeah, because it. I'm going to be honest. Uh-huh. I'm 100% honest. Uh-huh. And, we got to uh, be honest. We can't I, lead the people astray. And I think you're, you're def- maybe you might not agree with you might agree with me. <laughs> uh, you might be on the fence about this. Oh, dear. I am not a fan of teriyaki. Oh, I've always loved teriyaki. I put teriyaki in my cheesesteak. Uh-huh. Because it gives, it, it brings out that steak flavor. Like mm-hmm. It, it kind of like <laughs> flips it a little bit. I don't know what possessed me to try this place. I do like that the menu is very small. The menu Very, very, is, it is incredibly limited. But it everything has a purpose. They don't have like extra things for the sake of having extra yeah, things. Yeah, that's true. Which, from a business standpoint, is a very good idea. From a customer standpoint, eh. <laughs> it's actually a really good idea because you're gonna come in and you're gonna be like, "I don't eat fish. I eat meat. I eat chicken, or I don't eat chicken. Whatever. I eat fish." But you ain't got no sauce, except there teriyaki. Is room for improvement they could use a different sauce to break up all the teriyaki because the re- fried rice is fried with teriyaki i had the steak and it was fried with teriyaki and the vegetables were cooked in teriyaki <laughs> love teriyaki oh and they give you a convenient side of a teriyaki honestly it's not overpowering because it does have this true p- this perfect balance of meat rice Vegetables the and the vegetables are actually really fucking. They're good. amazing. They're steamed to perfection. Mm-hmm. And the, the sauce and everything on them, the flavor is it's so good. And the fried rice, I, I found it a tad bit too greasy. It was sticky. It was like it, it was obscenely sticky though. It, like, it is sticky. Sticky rice. It's but supposed it, to be like that. Uh, I was, did. I did find uh, it a bit too greasy. Yeah, I That's, think the grease combined with the stick. That's, made it wonky. Yeah, that's my one complaint about it. Um, but the meat was perfect. It, oh, yeah, it was. This meat, my, at least the steak, was very thinly sliced to the point where you would put it in your mouth and it would kind of dissolve. I got the salmon and it was... It was it really was good very, salmon. very good salmon. It was very flavorful. It was cooked perfectly. It worked really, really well with the other stuff. It tasted really freaking good with the teriyaki sauce on it. It was it was delicious mm-hmm. salmon. Mm-hmm. It was really good. I, I actually like this place. I really wanted to go there and eat today um, so we could try maybe some of the sides because uh, didn't they have like edamame and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, Not a lot, but. No. But I, I know we're going to go back. It's, good, gonna it's gonna decently take... priced, too. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess. It's not terrible. What are you going to say? I'm I'm going to take the bottle of spicy mayo with me. <laughs> You're going to judge that, me and I don't even care? No, it does need something else. Like right? a little something spicy. Maybe some sriracha, sriracha mayo. It needs some fucking yum yum sauce. I hate that word so much. It needs some white sauce. Uh, that doesn't make me feel better. But I feel like this place is, like, placed in, like, the border of Oviedo and nothingness. Yeah, it's, like, right there at the end of the town center before you're literally in forest. <laughs> so that that location, I, I won't say it's optimal. It's but definitely not a good location. You really can't even see it that well from the road either because it's a little bit back in the complex. It's a new building. Yeah. The brand new building. Like, the ones next to it are completely empty. Yeah. And... The food is great. I, I do have one more complaint, and that's the containers, the to-go containers. They're plastic. Mm-hmm. We are highly against plastic containers because they fuck up the food so Hot badly. Hotbox your food, and not a, not in a good way. Mm-mm. You need you need a container that lets it breathe a little bit. So maybe foam containers would be a better. Option. They serve the food in these plastic yeah. bowls that yeah. would come with the lid. Yeah. Oh, but they're they're utensils. I wanted to talk about that. Oh, the Those utensils are, cool. are pretty cool too. They are. Um, they double as a fork and a, and chopsticks. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty weird looking. It is. <laughs> it's like a a fork head with two sticks sticking out the other it's side. An incredibly long fork. It was. <laughs> 
And I, I do want to say something about management too. Um, you saw that was that lady that came in saying, "Hey, I still haven't received my money yet." Um, so what we could gather, because we were sitting right next to the kitchen and where they were talking, and the manager said, "Yeah, no, no worries. I'll just send you the money." And they went outside. He sent them the money, and that's the end of it. Apparently, they had placed an order online. They had just ran out of food because it's really good food. And uh, when she placed the order, it said no more food. They canceled the order. We're going to refund you the money. Money never came. So dude just came outside, gave him the money, and everybody was happy. So that that is pretty good you know, customer service. That's something that people like to see of the places they go support. He made up for the girl at the counter who looked like she would rather be in the grave than there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, did, she didn't seem too a, happy. A smile goes a long way. Yeah. Eh, just a couple of knocks. But still overall in great place. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, what do you think? I think the veggies stole the show. The veggies stole the show? The veggies and the meat. But the veggies, then the meat. And I would say the steak and the rice just together, that one bite, mm, so good. I don't, I don't know that I would say it's garbage though. It's it's not it's garbage. Close. It's very close. It could be. It could be. It just if they made a tiny change. A couple of changes, not just one, but yeah, um, teriyaki madness. It's well worth the drive up to Avito. If you're us, then it's not really that big of a drive. I was but... about to say we don't live that far from Avito. He's being <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> I just feel like we're eating out of If you live in Kissimmee, it's going to be a trick. Ugh. Yeah. Are there any other locations? Did you look? I did not. I know it's a chain. Yeah. They're all over the place, but maybe. But yeah, uh, Teriyaki Madness, that gets an okay. Uh, that's just right under garbage. And if you guys are ever in Oviedo, you want some good teriyaki food, let's go there and hit it up. So for housekeeping, we're going to do a little bit something different. Uh, and Karen's going to take it away. I hope I'm... Oh. Uh, I'm <laughs> that out. Look at it. Look at it in the oh, way. Oh, no. Okay. Housekeeping. Go sign up for our Patreon because we're giving away Persona 5 Royal Edition and the House in the Cerulean Sea this month. You'll find the link in the show notes. Remember to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at A Novel Console and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash A Novel Console. Don't forget, you can also tell your friends that they can find the podcast on most major podcast streaming platforms and that they can also listen on YouTube by searching for A Novel Console. And don't forget to tell them to subscribe, like, and comment. I said that so much better than you do. Uh, we'd be humbled if you did. That grammar is all over the place. <laughs> I need to change that up. <laughs> Let me change it. You should also leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts so that more people can find us because we are just lowly little podcasters. You can email us at a novel console at gmail.com and we will read your email on the show unless you ask us not to do so. I'm looking at you, France and Egypt, once again. I'm going to say this until one of you breaks down and tells us who you are. I can't enjoy that horrible podcast because they won't stop telling me to email them. <laughs> <laughs> Our art was done by Metamorphicae on Instagram. Go give her a follow. That is M as in Mary, E as in Edward, T as in Tom. I can't read any of the rest of that. It's going to be in the show notes. Yeah, it's in so the don't, show don't notes. It. Also, I forgot. I think I, we did talk about this. We're okay. getting stickers. We are? Yeah. They're 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 fixed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're fixed. They're, the, they were a little wonky. Yeah, they're going to cut off all the wonk. But we are, we are very, pre, very appreciative of they, our wonky stickers. They're going to cut off all the wonk, and then the other ones, the ones that are going to go in the cars, are really good. Um, so You know, like, Nelly and my mom are, like, the only people that are going to put a novel console sticker well, in their car. Well, if you want a novel console sticker for your car. France and Egypt, if you want an, a novel and a novel console sticker for your vehicle or, you know, your laptop, anything, we will mail you fucking stickers to France or Egypt if you'll just tell us who the fuck you are. 
And that why goes, you keep coming back because we love seeing that you listen to every episode. That goes to everyone. If you want a novel console sticker, yeah, we'll mail it to just you. Just send us an email with your address <laughs> and we'll mail it out. I promise you won't wake up in the middle of the night and find Karen staring at you while you're sleeping. Oh, get off it. What the hell was that? You 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 won't you won't stop messing with me about staring at you while you were asleep. <laughs> I wasn't even doing it intentionally. It you was an accident. You weren't staying at me. You were staying into darkness. I was just trying to make drought. it light. <laughs> I've been having a difficult week, folks. I, I'm, I'll be okay. We might have to get her an edible. Shh. So that's it for this week's episode. Anything else you want to say before we end the show, Caden? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.